hello <laughs> okay so I am finally making a video about the Broken Empire trilogy by Mark Lawrence I'm gonna start out by saying a few things first off I don't have the first book I did get these from the library you can kind of tell I borrowed the first book like I want to say like a month before I even borrowed these two in hindsight, I probably should have borrowed all three at the same time so that um, the first book was uh, fresh in my mind when I was reading these. But, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, literally this time. Um, so we're just gonna have to work around it. Okay, so yeah, that was the first thing. Oh yeah, second thing. This is a different format. Um... <laughs> which okay I really shouldn't really expect that it's very jarring because I do only have two videos on this channel but the reason that I am filming the actual books instead of like a video game or something to put in the background is because uh, whenever I watch people talk about books I do really enjoy seeing them hold up the actual physical copy which is why I thought this would be a pretty good alternative to actually show the books without, you know, doing too much camera work. <laughs> okay, so that was kind of a long intro. Um, we're just gonna get into it. Okay, so let's move on to talking about the books themselves. I don't exactly have a plan for this video so I'm sorry if it is a bit of a mess but it is the third time that I'm trying to actually record this so let's just hope that the third time's the charm and this will work out okay so I'm going to try to keep this very like I'm gonna try to keep it spoiler free if I ever do mention a spoiler I will put in a timestamp so that it can be avoided but I will do my best not to mention any spoilers so, okay so we're gonna start off with my overall thoughts about the books about the trilogy as a whole and then I'm going to talk about the books individually um, and I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible so yeah let's get into it Okay, I'm really wishing I had the first book here. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I would buy these books, but I don't have the money for it. So um, the library is just going to have to do for now. Okay, so overall, I really, really enjoyed the trilogy. It was very enjoyable. It was very fun and like refreshing i guess would be the word i haven't maybe it's just because i haven't really read books similar to this trilogy but um everything was really like exciting to me and i just wanted to know more about the world and the premise of the world building itself was very very interesting i really liked that I loved the characters. By the end of book three, I fell in love completely with the entire trilogy. There were, there was so much, there was just like so much depth to both the world, the characters, like I just loved so much about this trilogy and I am so happy that I finally got around to reading it. It was um, on my reading list for like the longest time ever and then I just finally decided to pick it up and I'm really happy that I did, really. Um, it was amazing and oh my gosh, I... Okay, I don't really want to get into spoilers but I'm going to tell you Jorg's... Jor okay, Jorg is the main character of the trilogy. His um, journey from the first book all the way till the end <laughs> it, it's just oh my gosh it, I it was mind-blowing to me I loved it I loved all of the nuances that went into building his character and holy crap the I don't know just the entire his just entire character arc over these three books was brilliantly done really like I <laughs> I was so hooked and just I just loved Jorg 
by the end like even you know i i loved him throughout the whole thing but by the end of it it was just why well, he is a really strong main character he was really one of the big reasons that i actually really loved the series great main character great world building the writing is really really like it's it's very poetic very descriptive it's and like it's told in first person this entire series is in first person and that was off-putting in the beginning when i opened up the first book but you get used to it and once i got used to it and it just makes sense it just makes sense like i loved it it was amazing and yeah i'm just gonna leave it there for my overall thoughts also I, okay, I don't really like to rate books, but if I did have to give a rating to the three books, I would say the first and second book would be somewhere around a 4 to a 4.5. The third book was a 5 star read for me. So yeah, now we'll get into the individual book talks and, um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the first book now, um, since I don't have the physical copy, unfortunately. I'm just going to have to settle with putting up a picture right there. So, the first book, Prince of Thorns. It served a very good introduction to the world. I enjoyed it a lot. It definitely grabbed me enough that I was pretty desperate to get my hands on the next two books after I finished it. I loved it. It was just the perfect introduction to the trilogy, really. We get a sense of Jorg's character, and while he travels... Okay, so because the basic plot of this first book is Jorg starts out in the road with a bunch of these criminals, and, you know, they're just, like, going around terrorizing, like, villages killing, stealing, whatever, um, and then something prompts Jorg to go back to the castle where he grew up in, and, you know, his father's the king. I believe it's been a hot minute since I've read this book, so I might be wrong, but I believe the reason he goes back is because he hears news of his father being married and he he was getting a new brother i believe um so he, he was going to go back to the castle to meet his new brother um though you know there's an ulterior motive behind that because his father uh was going to make this new, this new brother of his the next heir to the throne when that like that should belong to Jorg, like Jorg is the rightful heir. Um, so I guess in a sense Jorg wanted to go to reclaim his birthright, basically. Um, at least I believe that's how it was set up, um, and I don't believe this is a spoiler because it does happen in like the first two or whatever chapters in the book. So it's at the very beginning. Okay, um, so basically he goes to the castle and he he's going there as this like because he left when he was very young so now he's trying to return to show his father how ruthless he is how strong he is whatever and just i loved that i got to know him so well because when you were introduced to him in the beginning he is very he's because he's an awful awful person he's like this little kid or you know he, he's 14 so he's a teenage boy so he's this teenager who's just so awful and selfish and he just has no respect for anyone no no regard for human life he like he's willing to sacrifice everyone around him if it means it would benefit him and so even like people who are closest to him he's willing to sacrifice them for in order to win the game like it's it's an analogy he uses a lot throughout the trilogy is that he's the player and not the pawn so 
and then he basically he treats everyone around him as his own pawns so yeah he's you know very self-centered he doesn't care about anyone but himself but then as we follow him through this journey learning about his backstory and whatnot oh my gosh the depths that just layers on to his character was just so fun to peel back and to like by the end of book one i got a pretty good grasp of jorg's character and i wanted to know how much more he would develop in the next two books it was great i loved it i think it was brilliant and i think that's basically all i can really say about it uh it's a very nicely packed story so it can be read on its own but I was left with wanting more, which is why I continued on. So that's about it. It was a very fun book to read. Now let's move on to the next one. Second book, King of Thorns. Okay, I'm going to try here to hold it up, maybe. Um, does not fit in the screen, so I'm just going to adjust that. That is, that should do it. That's good enough. I'll center it because, um, that bothers me <laughs> if it's not centered. Okay, that's probably the best I can do. Okay, King of Thorns. Also, I'm gonna blur this because, um, I don't need to tell anyone my location. <laughs> okay, so, the second book, King of Thorns. Okay, so in the very beginning, right after I finished the trilogy, I did think this book was the weakest out of the three. Um, not to say that it wasn't still a really strong book on its own, but I thought the other two books made more of an impact. Um, but after I sat on it for a while, I do think that this is a bit stronger than Prince of Thorns. So... Yeah, I really, um, you know, again, I really liked it. The thing with this book, though, that's really interesting is, um, so it has flashbacks. So, um, like, I'm pretty sure, like, half the book is flashbacks. It goes back and forth between the peasant and then the flashbacks and whatnot. The present day, it takes place only in one day. So, it's Jorg's wedding day. Um... So the entire present day plot takes place only in one day. So it's very condensed. Um, and then the flashback just follows him. And like what happens in the flashback actually relates to what happens in the present. And it ties in so cleanly, so nicely. I loved the structure. The structure of this book was really strong. The, the flashbacks... And, you know, I know flashbacks don't really have the best reputation because they can be done really bad sometimes. Or even when done correctly, it can be difficult to enjoy. But this book, I feel like it did flashbacks brilliantly. I loved it. It, was, it made the structure of the st uh, story that much stronger, I believe. Um, and so, yeah, just... Do keep that in mind. It has flashbacks, but it's still a really great read. Um, and yeah, that's the thing. That's the interesting thing. Since the present day plot takes place only in one day, there isn't that much room exactly um, for character development for present day Jorg. Now, don't get me wrong. You still get plenty of character development from the flashbacks, but... The thing I really loved about this book, and like even the even though it takes place only in one day, somehow there is still some great character development. It's very subtle, um, because again, it only takes place in a day, but it's really well done. Like I, I just loved it. So present day Jorg, the thing that I really loved about this book is that present day Jorg is like the how he matured from the way he was in the first book because in the first book he was 14 this book he's 18 in present day and the maturity that he displays i think that's what really like hooked me in to this book is 
because if you see how like you can and like you can still see him growing from the flashbacks and then to see that this is how he turned out after that what happened in that first book like it, it just it just makes so much sense i just loved it because he's still the exact same person but you can see how he matured and i don't know i just really like that it, it was very deep like the details of it it's it's is great i loved it um so i think that's all i could say about this again without spoilers um so yeah we're gonna move on to the third book and we're in emperor of thorns my favorite of the trilogy <laughs> uh okay so emperor of thorns was really where everything came together <laughs> i i think i really liked this book because it has such a strong ending for the entire trilogy i loved so much about this book it <laughs> It there were scenes that melted my heart. There were scenes that um like that broke my heart. It was great. It's 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 a fantastic ride. I adored this book to bits. It it's it's the book that cemented this whole trilogy into my heart. So yeah, I just really loved it. Like the other two books, even if. It, like, even if I was, like, neutral to them, like, I still like them, obviously. But I think even if I didn't really like the last two, um, the first two books, if I read the third book afterwards, I would have just, like, loved the whole thing. <laughs> um, that's how strong I think this final book is. I loved... And again, this ties in a lot with the development of Jorg. As a character, he all oh my gosh, it's just the depth that he displays in this book, the struggles that when like just the everything I just loved it because he struggles in this book, he struggled in the second book with the consequences of what of his choices because in the first book he didn't care about anything he did as long as it just like benefited him, you know so. In the second and third book is when he actually starts to think his, th you know, he thinks things through. He's like, he has to face the consequences of all his actions and he struggles. There's a lot of internal struggle in both the uh, second and the third book. But I really loved the third book because everything that he goes through in the second book and then all the terrible things he does in the first book just comes full circle and just ties in together in this third book. It's great. It's like book one establishes his terrible behavior. Book two establishes his internal struggles as he starts to come, come to terms with what a terrible person he is. Book three is where he actually has to face his past and actually try to overcome it. Like, I... <laughs> It was it's like it just ties it all so well together and i loved it this is what i absolutely adored about this trilogy the way it just mm, gorgeous absolutely beautiful i loved it <laughs> and yeah it's just just excites me so much just to think about it i <laughs> don't even really know how to explain this book um i guess you know, it's just hit Jorg trying to become the emperor, so he has to do a bunch of traveling to go to this, like, congress where, or, yeah, they call it a congression, where um, a bunch of, like, rulers from other places come together, and then they have to do a vote to see who, like, they have to vote for the emperor. Um, it's always been a stalemate because no one, everyone wants to become the emperor, or they don't want an emperor, um, but Jorg is, like, very determined to become the emperor here but i just love it. it all the loose ends are tied really nicely but it's not so tight knit that it's like it's still a bit open-ended so you can still imagine what happens afterwards it leaves quite a bit um but it's closed enough that mark lawrence would ruin the series if he decided to continue it um I loved the ending. The ending was brilliantly done. I, 
it, it was such a strong ending and I don't know it's just everything just comes together so well also there is a plot twist in this book oh my gosh the plot twist well I don't really know if it's a plot twist or not but it took me by surprise so I'm gonna count it as a plot twist it has something to do with the dead king so if you've read it you'll know what I'm talking about I loved it so freaking much it was oh, oh like that plot twist blew my mind and I actually figured out the plot twist before Jorg did and I don't know if you were meant to figure it out like that early but um the thing with the plot twist is is even if you figured it out early it doesn't ruin the book because the dramatic irony builds up the tension so whether you figure it out or not it's just great it's fantastic it's still like so twisty and like y you just have to know what happens next that's the kind of book this is as good as the third book was there was still something in the third book that kind of okay so there are flashbacks in the third book as well the flashbacks um continue from the second book to the third book and okay i'm gonna have to admit that the flashbacks did start kind of getting on my nerves in the third book i was like reading it through and like in the back of my mind i knew they were necessary the structure of the book was so much better with the flashbacks but it was kind of getting tiring to keep going back and forth back and forth and like you know it's still the strongest out of the three but <laughs> there were moments in the book where i was like why are we back here again um but yeah other than that it was great it's still really strong i loved it um <laughs> And, you know, in the end, it all, like, made sense. It all came together. So, I I would give it a pass. But, yeah, it, it did kind of annoy me a little bit um, there. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, it was... I loved it. That was great. Um, I adored it. I loved it. And uh, I should stop talking about it because I'm going to keep on going on and on and on about it. So, that's it for the third book. Oh, I'm so sad I don't have the first book. <laughs> one day, I do promise, one day I will buy the trilogy once I get enough money. <laughs> Ugh, rip. Okay, well, I'm just gonna wrap it up here. The, um, also, I'll just put a picture of Prince of Thorns here just so that it just completes the set. Um, this was a fantastic trilogy to read. It's very dark, it's very violent, it is adult fantasy, and it has morally, very, very morally gray characters. So, um, I guess this section is like, who is it for type of um, section. Yeah, um, so if you like really dark fantasy, if you like um, very intricate world building that are given by subtle hints and not like huge info dumps i guess um because it builds up among the three books and then by the end of book three you just understand you grasp the concept of the world really well um and if you like morally great characters <laughs> it's a great place to find one because Jorg is very morally gray from the beginning till the end even at the end even that, like he's already accepted that he's a terrible person so till the end he's awful he's an awful person but mm, the, it's it's just i can't even talk about it without spoiling anything it's still great i loved it it's perfect i loved that you know he didn't exactly get a redemption arc or whatever but he, you know, he still remained true to his character till the end, even though there was a lot of development and he did struggle a bit with his morality, whatever. Um, so yeah, it was great. And the side characters are great as well. Uh, my favorite characters out of this trilogy is actually two side, like the side characters. There are two that are kind of fighting up there in the top spot, but um, 
I'm not going to get into it because then it's just going to become a whole new discussion. And I'll finish it there. The Broken Empire Trilogy by Mark Lawrence. It's a great, it, it's a great trilogy, great read, very enjoyable. Um, although they are kind of lengthy, you know, it's fantasy, it's adult fantasy, it's very, they get, they tend to be very long. But I love the writing style, I loved um, pretty much everything about this book, um, about the series. So yeah, I'll end it there. It's a terrible conclusion, but whatever. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed me gushing about this. I don't really know if it's interesting or not, but at least um, having the camera gives me a reason to talk about them, so it's whatever. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Bye.